This video describes the feeding processes of the Atlantic Slipper Snail Crepidula fornicata using both video microscopy and video endoscopy. Crepidula are suspension feeding snails that often form stacks of 2 to 12 individuals. They feed by capturing particles on their gill and transporting the material to the mouth for ingestion. Microscopic observations were made of the ventral surface of snails attached to glass plates, which were inverted in flowing seawater. So remember that you are viewing the snails that are upside down. Endoscopic observations were made with a similar setup, except snails were allowed to attach to slotted plastic plates that enabled the optical insertion tube of the endoscope to be inserted into the mantle cavity of the snail. Here we see a snail feeding on the microalga tetraselmus. The interior portion of the snail is visible, including the head, which is about 2 millimeters in width. The mouth is to the right. Food cord, which is green in color, is forming in the neck canal under the right neck lobe. The cord is formed from material being transported off of the distal edge of the gill. The proximal half of the gill can be seen in the bottom of the video and runs up over the head. In a speed enhanced video clip, we can better see how the food cord is rotated by cilia in the neck canal and transported anteriorly towards the mouth. When it reaches the mouth, the cord is seized by the radula and drawn into the buccal cavity. In this speed enhanced video clip, we can see a food cord being severed by the radula. Note that one piece of the cord is ingested and the other piece is transported anteriorly. This uneaten piece is collected in the food pouch and rotated into a compact mucous algal ball. After a few minutes, this algal ball was seized by the radula and also ingested. Not all food cords are ingested. In this video clip, a portion of the food cord is severed and pushed anteriorly past the food pouch. This cord will join the other uneaten cords collecting on the exterior edge of the shell to the right. This rejected material can be considered pseudofeces, that is, food particles that are captured and transported to the mouth but are not ingested. Note the new food cord forming in the neck canal. On many occasions, fecal pellets, indicated by the arrow, were entrained in the food cord that was forming in the neck canal. Eventually, the food cord with fecal pellets was transported to the mouth and ingested. We will now make more detailed observations of the gill by means of video endoscopy. Moving past the head, we zoom in on the proximal edge of the gill, which you can see at the right of this video clip. The individual filaments of the gill, which are approximately 73 micrometers in width, are now visible. Watch carefully as particle masses, including added red particles, are captured on the frontal surface of the gill filaments and moved distally by the frontal cilia. Towards the center of the gill, we can see red particle aggregations moving down the long axis of the filaments, but these particles are directed obliquely across the filaments in an anterior distal direction. It is easier to see the oblique movement of individual particles, which cross the interfilamentary spaces through which water flows. The particles are not lost by the gill as they cross these spaces. In slow motion, you can clearly see how these particles are directed both distally and anteriorly. We believe that these particles are trapped in fine mucus strings that attach to the rotating food cord that forms in the neck canal. The frontal cilia of the filaments direct the particle strings distally, while the rotating food cord pulls the strings anteriorly, thus producing the oblique movement of particles we see on the gill. The movement of mucus strings down and across the gill results in the appearance of a mucus net. We are now looking at the distal edge of the gill. The abfrontal side of the individual filaments is now visible. The edge of the gill is inserted into the neck canal, which receives particle-laden mucus strings from the frontal surface. In this sequence, note the red strings coming off of the gill and the bright red food cord that is held in the neck canal. As the gill moves away from the neck canal, we can see a portion of the food cord being transported anteriorly in the canal.
Finally, particles can be directed distally by the abfrontal cilia. Here the gill filaments have temporarily separated, allowing us to view the movement on the abfrontal surface. This concludes the observations of feeding in the Atlantic slipper snail. More information about our study can be found in the paper by Shumway et al., which was cited at the beginning of this video.